I want to show you when there's possible speed in the market and when there's no possible speed in the market. So let's take a look at the sweet spot trade. And then let's look at these uh, momentum trades and also the, the um, uh, when there's a change of trend. So we have a, what's called a dual trend filter. So this is this morning's uh, action this morning on the S&P. So we have a dual trend filter in the trade room. Uh, nine parameters have to come, to get, come together before this turns green, green, meaning here's our outer zone. This is our trend zone. If it's green, we're looking to buy. And then here's our sim Rinko bar type that we created, which are, those are our inner dots inside of it. And so the inner dots will show structure of the market. If we're setting higher lows, that's an uptrend. And more importantly, we're green, green. So if we're green, green, we're looking to only buy the market, meaning we're looking for buy setups only. If it's red, red, we're looking for sell setups only. If it's red, green, meaning when the first green dot came in, it was red, green like this, that's a transition period where the market could, could go into a chop phase and we're looking for a failure in momentum trades. So there's a few setups we like to look for. We like to look for these momentum setups. That's when our oscillator is pegged at 123.81 or negative 123.81 for shorts, but when it's peg, meaning flatlining, we can look for these momentum setups that come up. These yellow candles will automatically fire, and that you look for momentum setups when we're doing what? When we're trending, when we're green, green, All right? Looking for green, green. You don't look for any momentum setups unless you are green, green, or red, red. So the first two momentum setups after a trend change is the best. I like failure than Momo 1. And then the market comes and does what's called a V-bottom. Now, this is this morning's price action. I want to show you what a V-bottom looks like. This is a V-bottom. And a V-bottom, what we're going to do is we want to hold structure on the V-bottom. So that is a V-bottom. So these are momentum trades when we're pegged. And then the retracement, when there's a red reversal bar that comes in, and you can see structures holding on this chart. It's easy to see. That's a V bottom buy. Now the V bottom buys are the best setup you're going to get in the room because it's green, green or red, red. You're already in an uptrend or downtrend. So they're very, very accurate setups because the market's already moving in your direction, setting higher highs or lower lows, etc. So that's a V bottom. Now there's a specific way you can do it, which is trying to do one right here, but we, we have not fired a yellow candle. So you can see we're holding structure here. We have not closed two candles below this structure. So we're holding structure, but there's no yellow candle. Why isn't there a yellow candle? Well, this is called a lazy uh, sweet spot trade because you're above structure on the other chart. Let me show you we're above structure. So if we look at this morning's trade, you can see we're above structure too. The difference between this setup and this setup is you have a yellow candle that came in on a V bottom on our additional chart. That tells us that we have confirmation that the market's trying to break into new highs. Now, as long as we don't break this low, this lazy, I call it a lazy V bottom. Why do I call it a lazy V bottom? Because you are not forming a yellow candle on a pull-in like this one did. Now, this is the best setup you can get in the trade room. This is when you, the hammer, the reversal bar or the doji right there, when it closes yellow, we talked about this a couple days ago on Wednesday. When you close a yellow hammer with my system, that's the best setup you're going to get if you're above structure. That's called a V bottom sweet spot buy. And I call it the zero candle because it's it's turning exactly at the reversal bar or the hammer. So that's called a sweet spot bottom. So this is your best setup you're going to get. You're going to get a sweet spot bottom when the hammer, meaning the open and the close equal each other, turn yellow. Now, why do these turn yellow and why are they important to turn yellow for entries for these momentum and these V bottoms? Because they're very important because it's telling you that struck that previous uh, lows or highs have been broken, have been broken and that this reset or this or this retest of a reset 
is now looking for a new possible continuation trade. So what it does, it lets us know that we're into possible new territory of setting a new higher high or lower low. So when you get this chart that not only forms your momentum one, momentum two, or you get the V bottoms right here, this yellow candle is very, very important. So I have two charts in the trading room. If you look at it, skinny it down, you can see this is our liquidity grab chart over here. This is our liquidity grab. And the liquidity grab chart, it tells us if structure is holding to, you can see we've been green, green, sitting higher lows, higher lows, higher lows, higher lows. Very easy to see. So the difference between this sweet spot trade and this sweet spot trade is one characteristic. This one has speed because we have formed a yellow candle. That's a component of this also. It has to show speed, meaning it's a shallow retracement. So the components that are built into these yellow candles that form also is a shallow retracement. So if you see a yellow candle form, you mean it's a shallow retracement and it's a component of setting into a new territory, meaning we're looking for a higher high continuation trade. As you can tell, this one did not form any yellow candles right now. So that's a difference in the two V bottoms. This is a this is the best trade you can get. This is called a V bottom sweet spot. And this is called a lazy V bottom. And the reason I call it a lazy view bottom is you're not getting the two charts to degree. So you're not getting confluence. So what's the difference in the two? The difference is on this chart over here, we're turning actually a yellow pull-in bar exactly at the V bottom. This one we're not. So this creates more speed to get you launched off of that V bottom where this one can oscillate. Now this can oscillate all the way down to the lows and highs and back and forth. Okay? We're, we're strictly talking about V bottoms, V tops right now, Tim. I'll go over the failure trades in one sec. Yeah, we'll go over that one sec. So these are the V bottoms, V tops. This is going to be your best setup in the trade room because the market's already setting higher lows or lower highs. All right? So but that's the big difference is you need to know the difference between a V bottom sweet spot trade and a V bottom lazy sweet spot trade. The best one you're going to get in this trade room is when this candle, the zero candle right there turns yellow because the rule of thumb is if you turn a yellow candle on a V bottom within three candles, within three candles of that hammer, Meaning this, if it closes within three candles, it's a V bottom. This is a zero candle here. The first candle is a zero. The count starts after the zero candle. One, two, three. So you need to turn a yellow candle on a V bottom within three candles. So here's a zero candle. Here's one. Let me mark these up for you. So it's got to turn a yellow candle by three. If it turns it turn a candle by three, the train's already left the station. You're, you're, you're getting into a higher risk trade. So let's look at these candles. That's a zero candle, zero, one, two. That's how the count works. Right, zero, one, two, it's hard to get them over on top of each other, but you, you see my point. That's a zero candle here, zero, one, two, three. So it's got to come within three, three it's got to turn a yellow candle within three candles. Okay? So that's very important for you to understand V bottoms and V tops because they're great continuation trades. Now, when can we take momentum trades? Let's go over that next because that's very important. After the V bottom sets itself, or gets running, we have a momentum trade. Now, there's two momentum trades, a momentum one and momentum two. The best trade you're going to get is momentum one. I call it momo one. And then the next best trade you're going to get is called momo two. 
Momo 2, you should already have a runner on Momo 1. I do not like taking Momo 3s here because you're late in the tooth. Right? The trade's way late. So you get Momo 1. You get Momo 1 and you get Momo 2 after a, uh, after a V bottom. Momo 1 and then Momo 2. I do not like taking Momo 3s, Momo 4s, Momo 5s, etc. because the, the train, like I said, has left the station and uh, you're late in the game. Now, if we can V-bottom here with a yellow candle, the Momos are going to reset. And then you can go all over and do a Momo 1, Momo 2, for example. For example, here's a Momo 1. Here's a Momo 1, and here's a Momo 2. That's a Momo 3, Momo 4, Momo 5. So you can take 1 and 2 here, but then you have to wait. You can't take this one, this one, or this one until this resets and does a V-bottom, and you're back to Momo 1, Momo 2. So you, these are the times to take the Momo trades. Is when you're first coming into a failure trade, out of a, uh, into a failure trade, or V-bottoms. That's when it resets. When you don't want to take these signals, when you don't want to take these signals, if you already missed the Momo 1, Momo 2, you should have a runner already in place. You need to get used to taking these trades after a failure with the Momo 1 and 2 or a sweet spot bottom, Momo 1, Momo 2. Now, I prefer just taking V bottom, V tops with the Momo 1. It's the best time that I like to to do that okay so you can see we have not v bottomed over here no v bottom yet if this v bottoms against the yellow candle that pulls in then we start a v bottom trade setup and we'll look for mo one one mo mo two off that now let's go for a failure trade look for well, what is a failure trade what a failure trade is is that so the market's cranking up, right? Let's let's take a look at them. We had a lot of them yesterday. You guys did very well yesterday, by the way, when I was out of the office. You guys did very, very well on catching these momentum trades. A failure trade happens when you turn green, red, or red, green. So green, red, or red, green, when it first turns red, green, or green, red, right here, you have an opportunity of a failure trade. Now, a failure trade, you must be pegged. Just like a Momo trade, you have to be pegged. This is a negative 123.81 down here. You can see we're pegged. This is a failure trade. It has to be pegged or it's not a failure trade. And then it goes into the cycle of a Momo 1, Momo 2 again. Once again, my favorite is failure trade, Momo 1, V bottom, V tops, Momo 1. That's the combo you want to do for a failure trade. Failure. When there's a transition, when it's not green-green and it turns green-red or red-green, this is a transition phase. The only possible trade you have is a failure trade. Then a Momo. That's a Momo. Never take Momo 3 or Momo 4. Same thing happened here to the upside. Had a lot of these yesterday, they worked out really, really well. This turned from red-red to red-green. This is a transition phase. The only trade you can take is a failure trade. These are the cycles of the market that happen on a daily basis. There's your failure. The best trade to take after a Momo, I mean after a failure or a V top V bottom is Momo 1. There's your Momo 1. Now you, you can take up to Momo 2, like I said. The more Momos you take after a failure trade in V top V bottom, your risk goes up. Your risk substantially goes up because the moves are already in place. But you can take all the way up to Momo 2. Where we can't get involved in these trades is Momo 3, Momo 4, because you got a possible reversal coming. Momo, Momo 3, Momo 4. You can see there's not much left on the bone. The meat's already taken off the bone, right? So you start get, you're getting scraps up here. This is scraps. This is where you tend to get stopped out at the end of a move. So what we don't want to do is we don't want to, we don't want to trade the end of the cycle. You don't want to trade these levels up here. And that typically is a Momo 3, Momo 4, 5, etc. All right, we want to get into the beginning of the trend, failure trade, Momo 1, etc.
All right. So right now, we're waiting for a yellow candle for a V bottom, right? It's holding this swing low right now. It's still holding structure. So we're waiting for a V bottom. It's a close of the yellow candle. It's the close of the yellow candle, correct? That is a failure trade. So the setups we have in the trade room are very simple. Here's a cycle of the market. Here's a cycle. Very simple. You go from a failure. Let's say if you're red, green, or green, red, they don't match. The first, the only trade you're going for is a failure trade. From the failure trade, it goes into the cycle of Momo 1, Momo 2. And then it goes right to the cycle of a V bottom or V top. It does this every day in all markets. Now that V bottom, V top can be a sweet spot trade if structure holds. Like you did here, this is a sweet spot trade because structure, you see my structure dots here, it never closed below them before it turned a yellow candle reversal. That means V bottom, V top. And then what we got, the cycle starts all over again. It keeps repeating itself. So if the market's in a hard up trend like this, hard up trend, you know, Momo, here's a Momo, Momo 2, Momo 3, 4, 5, you don't take those. Then it resets, V bottom. Momo 1, Momo 2, there's a Momo 3, we don't take Momo 3s. Now we're looking for it to reset. We're looking for a V bottom to keep the cycle going. So this cycle is going to continue to repeat itself until this up here happens again. Until we get from green, green, we go to red, green. Once red, green comes up, what are we going to look for? The only trade to look for is in a failure. The cycle repeats. Then Momo 1, Momo 2. Then V bottom if it's an uptrend or V top if it's in a downtrend. This is a complete cycle every single day in the S&P. And it repeats over and over and over again. Now, if the cycle's strong and we keep moving up, you just may have Momo 1, Momo 2, V bottom. Momo 1, Momo 2, V bottom. Momo 1, Momo 2, V bottom. Because if it's green, green, you just stay on, the, stay on that side of the trade. Or if it's red, red, you stay on the side of the trade. That's a complete cycle of the market. Now, these are 20 tick candles. I have a 120.20 on this chart. And my structure over here, structure, it's a lazy V bottom right now. The structure right here is a 20 tick candle. So what does that mean? You don't need 35 tick stops, 30 tick stops, 25 tick stops. Why? Because the length of the candle, as you can tell, the length of these candles are 20 ticks. So your stop, maximum stop needs to be just at the low of that candle, right? Now, some of you traders like to use a 15 tick stop. Let's say you get pulled in on V top or V bottom. You use a 20. And then after your first target or target two hit, then you bring it up to break even plus one. A lot of you guys are waiting until target two. So you bring it up to break even plus one, which I like to do also, it's up to you how you want to do it on the ATM. Everybody has different risk tolerances. But my point is, is that you don't need to have this stop sitting below structure. You don't want this stop down here or below structure because it breaks that low, right? The market could be in trouble, right? Right now, it does what I talked about this week is this is a W bottom. What it can do these sweet spot trades can do W bottoms or M tops. If they do that, watch for a powerful move because structure's holding. Structure's still holding, and I'm trying to get a lazy V bottom buy. If this pulls in, this should go. If we get another pull in, we should go. If we get a yellow candle that forms over here. So if I get a yellow candle that forms over here to get pulled in here, it should be a nice setup to the upside. And our target should be up here at 28 on market profile. But the magenta line at the bottom, it's very important because it shows speed in the market. So in these momentum trades, you have to have this pegged. 
it has to be pegged at 123.81. You'll see the number here on the bottom right on the oscillator. Right now, what's the oscillator say? What's our oscillator say? Oscillators are absolutely worthless by themselves. They're great when you got structure of the market and you know the structure. We know the structure and the trend, so oscillators were great with structure and trend. They're terrible by themselves. So right now, negative 101.59 is not trending, is not up above 123.81, is it? It's negative. We have no momentum to the upside, so there's no way a Momo could happen. Now, V bottoms, you're not going to be pegged because it's a retracement, full retracement, then get a yellow candle. But on Momo trades and failure trades, you must be pegged at 123.81 or negative 123.81. Don't make it any more difficult than that because that shows speed in the market. Don't overthink this. Momo trades and failure trades must be pegged at 123.81 or negative to show speed. That's it.